What's wrong with the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach? And why does it sometimes stop here? And sometimes stop here. So hello, I'm Scott and you're watching Your Experience Guide and I'm going to be talking about the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach or as the park call it, Pleasure Beach Resort. Now there's a lot of stories out there about the big one's reliability. Why does it always stop on the lift hill? Why does it do that? What's up with it now? There's so many stories about reliability issues with the big one. So what's wrong with the big one? Or are people just getting a little bit carried away because the big one's doing exactly what it's designed to do? So in the intro of this video, I put a couple of clips in where the big one was either stopped on the lift hill or in a block break. Now all of those shots were filmed either during testing, when they do block testing on the big one, which is something they do every single day before the big one opens. They can do it on one train, two trains, or three trains. They don't do it on three trains anymore because they don't have three trains readily available anymore. But it can, in theory, test on one, two, or three trains during block testing. And if it wasn't during block testing they got the shots, it was drawing what's known as a wheel check. The engineers at Blackpool Pleasure Beach carry out a wheel check on the big one every single day it's open. Now some days you might not see it because you might not be in the area of the park or if the big one's on one train, you won't see a train stopped on the lift hill when they're doing a wheel check. But if the big one is on two trains when they're doing a wheel check, you will most definitely see one of the trains stopped at 50 foot. Here's an example of a full clip I filmed during a wheel check last September at the Pleasure Beach. Now, whenever we put a video up about the big one, whether it be on YouTube or Facebook mainly, there'll always be a comment about how the big one is unreliable, it definitely stopped on the lift hill, it broke down, it did this, it did the other thing. Well, yeah, it does always stop on the lift hill. That's an absolute certainty because in the morning during testing, it will stop at 50 foot and stop at 200 foot. And during the day, if it's on two trains, it will definitely stop at 50 foot at some point while there's a wheel check taking place. Now, when the wheel checks are done, they park one train at 50 foot while the other train is on the brake run having the wheels checked by the engineers at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now what they do is, they bring it in slowly round the final corner and they bring it in very slowly through the last block break where the engineers underneath the track will be seen checking all of the wheels and they'll do this with each carriage, each wheel and they'll slowly move the train back into the station. Only when the wheel checks are fully completed will the train on the lift hill then continue its journey up to 200 foot and beyond and then the guests on the train will experience the big one. So why is it that Blackpool Pleasure Beach's engineers do wheel checks on the big one during public operation hours? Well, it's to do with the wheel compounds that are used on the big one. Because of the type of material that's used for the wheel compounds, and there is several different compounds that they use, believe it or not, they do have slow wheels, intermediate wheels, and fast wheels for the big one. It might sound a little bit like Formula One, but they do genuinely have different wheel compounds for different weathers on the big one. Now those compounds react differently to how fast the train is running. So at times they do have to check the wheels and they do it at a set time every day. So usually between three and four o'clock, you will probably see a wheel check happening on the big one. Might be slightly before three o'clock, but you will around that time, if you're at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, see a wheel check happening. As an example of these different wheel compounds on the big one, I've actually got two big one wheels in my hand. So this one has a red compound and this one has like a browny yellow compound. These were both used on the big one at some point and now both retired. But from what I can see on this one, there is cracks all the way around on the wheel compound. Now that is obviously why this one is no longer used on the ride. 
This one has not got as many cracks in the middle, but it is worn on the outside. So these are the kind of things that they will be checking for when they're doing a wheel check. Now, of course, if they see a wheel that's got the cracks like this one has got, then they're gonna take it off and mean it might delay how long you're waiting for the big one, but they'll take it off and replace it with a brand new wheel with a brand new compound or a replaced compound to make sure that the one that's damaged is taken off the ride. And here's another wheel from the big one with a different color compound again, with different signs of wear and tear on the, on the tread or on the compound. So I've got, I've actually got five of these in the house and they've all got different damage and different reasons that they've been taken off of the big one over time. So it's interesting to see that even just from, from what I've got, there is at least three different compounds that have been used on the big one for wheel compounds over the last 10 or 15 years. So the next time you're at Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the big one's on two trains, keep an eye out for a wheel check because I guarantee at some point during the operational hours of the day, you'll see the big one at 50 foot with another train on the brake run having all of the wheel compounds checked. And I guarantee this is not a breakdown. It is a controlled stop. The ride operators will even tell the people in the train that they will be stopping at 50 foot and there will be a ride operative stood on the lift hill waiting for the train to get up there and stop and they will talk through with the guests what's happening. Going back to something else I mentioned earlier on in this video is block testing on the big one. Now there is several block zones on the big one. Now you'll have heard El Toro Ryan talk about this in his problematic roller coaster videos and I am not for one minute going to claim I know as much as he does about safety zones and block zones on roller coasters but as a very brief example, the big one has five block zones. The station, the lift hill, the mid-course brake run, safety brake and ready brake. Safety brake and ready brake are the two brake runs at the end of the ride before you go back into the station. Because the big one has those five block zones, it used to be able to operate on a free train service. Now quite often when it was on a free train service, you would see one train dispatched as the other one was pretty much leaving the lift hill. That's how quickly the trains used to be sent on the big one. This is something that is still seen to this day on another Arrow Hypercoaster called Magnum XL 200 at Cedar Point. That is regularly operated on a free train service. And when you are loaded into the train, there is no faffing. The ride ops will be basically on your case. Get in, put your seatbelt on, pull your lap bar down, they will charge down the train and they will send the train. And you will be going up the lift hill very quickly after you've just seen another train go out of the station before you. There is no messing, it's very safe and it's very efficient. The big one hasn't operated on free trains since 2001, I believe. However, when run on two trains efficiently with quick loading, quick dispatches, the big one on two trains can seriously eat through a queue. Now we don't see that very often anymore, unfortunately, but back in the day when the big one was on three trains or two trains, it really did eat through the queue. And when you would join the queue and say, be in the extensions by the Pepsi Max cans, you knew you'd probably be waiting half an hour at most, whereas now it can take a lot longer than that. Anyway, enough about three trains and two trains on the big one and other Arrow Hyper coasters. Once again, back to the point of block testing. Block testing is carried out every single morning by the engineers and ride operatives on the big one. Now they're doing this to ensure the ride is safe to operate on a multi-train service, whether that be two trains or three trains, but to be fair, they do do block testing on one train as well. But I would imagine it's a lot less complicated doing it on one train compared to two or three trains. It's important to do that kind of testing because they need to make sure that if the big one is on two trains, that the safety zones or the block zones are gonna work as they're designed to do. So for example, if there's one train out on the track on the big one, and for whatever reason, it stops on the mid course brake run by the Big Blue Hotel, the Pleasure Beach need to make sure that if there was already another train on the lift hill, which is unlikely, but say there was another train already on the lift hill, they need to make sure that that train is gonna stop before it leaves the lift hill, because the next stopping point is the mid course brake run where there's already a train. So whilst we might see the big one stopped at 50 foot, 100 foot, 200 foot, wherever on the lift hill, there is usually a damn good reason for it. It's usually because 
the pleasure beach are wheel checking the big ones trains or it's because the safety system has kicked in and that's not the ride being broke down that's the ride doing exactly what it was designed for so if i've ever been in the big blue hotel and i've been watching the big one testing i've noticed if the park's opening at say 11 a.m quite often the testing on the big one will start from around 9 30 a.m and when I say we'll start from, I mean the visual testing. You'll see the train going round from 9.30 a.m. But it's not constant testing. You'll see one train go around do a full circuit. You might see another train going around and stop on the lift hill or the mid-course brake run or on one of the safety brakes before the station. So it, there's a variety of things they do during that testing. And it's not like they just run the ride round and round and round constantly for 90 minutes. You see a variety of different things happening. And that's why sometimes we might see the big one stopped at 50 foot or 200 foot with nobody on it during testing. It really is quite normal. So why is it I'm doing this video? Why am I talking about wheel checks and block testing and all this on the big one? Well, to be quite honest, I'm a little bit fed up of reading about how the big one's unreliable and unsafe and blah, blah, blah. And it's all been a narrative created by a couple of regional news websites clickbait sites that are constantly reporting about the big one whenever it has a stoppage. I'm not going to name these sites, but I'm fairly sure you'll have seen these reports and you'll be pretty clued up on who I'm talking about. So I'm not going to name them, but it does my head in when literally the big one has like a two minute stoppage and there's a big story about it. And all of a sudden you've seen it reported all over the country and it's like, come on guys, it was a wheel check, leave it out. Now the problem with this is because it gets them clicks, because it gets people like me ranting about them in videos and whatnot and replying to their posts on social media telling them to give it a rest or report on something that's more important, they will continue to do it. And I think there's a great way that Blackpool Pleasure Beach or Pleasure Beach Resort could shut down all these like news reports about the big one and they could maybe take a look at what Alton Towers did with the Smiler in 2016 when any time like the Smiler was closed for a little while or might have had a lift stoppage or whatever, the news were all over it. And it was an easy target, like the big one's an easy target. But Alton Towers shut it down by putting a director in front of the towers on a camera, explain the safety procedures, explain what was going on and shut down the clickbait stories. Now, I don't know if you saw the recent promo video from Pleasure Beach during their season launch, but... There is an example there of two or three or even four really good camera presenters who could literally get in front of the camera and shut down these news stories from the regional press who are constantly reporting on the big one stoppages and be like, right, it stopped because of this reason, the safety systems have kicked in, it's standard procedure, please report on something more important. Probably more professional than the way I've just said it, but I don't know if you saw that video from them, from their season launch, but it was expertly put together, great presentation, really well edited, and that kind of thing to sort of shut down the narrative about the big one and what's been reported on it so often, I think would have put an end to this silly narrative that's been created that the big one always breaks down, because it doesn't. Here's some examples of it working perfectly. So as we can see from those shots, the big one doesn't always break down and the big one doesn't always stop on the lift hill. Actually, the times it does stop on the lift hill, it's actually quite rare. It's just that every time it does it, it's reported on. So it literally looks like it happens all of the time. And this is why I think that there's been a really unfortunate narrative created, whether it's intentional or not, 
by the local news sites. I don't know, but it does seem like it's had a right knock-on effect in terms of the reputation that the big one has at the Pleasure Beach. Going on the Pleasure Beach defensive like this is taking me right back to the Pleasure Beach experience era of this YouTube channel. However, it has just been something that has really bugged me over the last couple of years, seeing this narrative created about the big one, which has created a bad reputation for its reliability. And I really do think that's unfair on the people who work on it and get it ready every single day, doing all that block testing, changing wheels, checking wheels, and all the other work that goes into it. No doubt about it, if you go to Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the big one is closed, you're gonna be frustrated. I get frustrated when it's closed, especially when it's testing all day in the park when you've been told on social media there's no chance of it running. But the amount of work that goes into it to get it ready every single day should never be questioned. And that is what I don't like to see by these stories about its reliability because it's not as unreliable as it's made out to be. Now, with all that said, and the defensive nature of this video over, it is worth pointing out that the big one is 30 years old and does have technical issues. It's just not as unreliable as people like to make out. So onto that point and these lift stops that it's been having and the DMAG fails and the overspeeds, these, are, these have been happening since the big one opened and it, they're not new issues. But the problem is because they're reported on so much, it seems like they're happening all the time, which they might be happening more than they used to, and it might need a new computer system and might need a new station for the transfer track and all that, but I still don't think it's as unreliable as it's being made out to be. So going back to the original question and the title of this video, what is wrong with the big one? Well, it's old. It's in its 30th anniversary season. Now for a person, 30 is not old, although I felt it when I got to my 30th birthday. But for a person, being 30 is not old. But for a roller coaster, getting to 30 years of service on a seafront with pretty dodgy weather climate, yeah, it's done really well to get to 30 years, but there is always gonna be issues with it. And that's why I think over the next few years, we might see Blackpool Pleasure Beach installing a completely new computer system that operates the big one. Cedar Point did it with Magnum XL 200 in 2014. They got a company called Consign in, who fitted a new computer control system onto Magnum XL 200, and now it operates a lot better for them. So I think that'd be great if Pleasure Beach could do that with the big one. Also, I think that the DMAG and the transfer track system probably needs an upgrade. The big one station is on three levels. So when you get on the train, obviously that's the loading area, but that track actually lifts up and there's a level for a train underneath and another one underneath that. So you've got the loading area, maintenance, and then the pit level that lifts all the way up to the top of the big one station so they can get trains in and out of the station. And to end this video, there is gonna be a little bit of a moan. It's the 30th anniversary season of the most iconic roller coaster in Blackpool and possibly the most iconic roller coaster in the United Kingdom. It's 30 years since the big one opened. There's been no mention of it around the park so far. There's no anniversary merch, no anniversary posters, no anniversary signage, nothing. Absolutely nothing. You wouldn't, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know that it was the big one's 30th anniversary season. And for me, that's a real shame, but also, it would be great to see Pleasure Beach soon announce that there is going to be an event to celebrate the 30th anniversary season for the big one. And I'm not talking about one of their fan club events. I'm talking about an event like they did for Big Dipper last year. Big Dipper's iconic. The big one's iconic. Okay, the big one might not be reaching 100 years of service, and I doubt it ever will. But it's a big thing to be celebrating. 30 years of your most iconic roller coaster. 30 years since you broke the record for the tallest roller coaster in the world. So why not celebrate it? Why not put a party on at the end of May? Get all the enthusiasts in like for Big Dipper and have a big celebration. It would be amazing. So to conclude on this video, I don't think the big one has perfect reliability, but I also don't think it has as many problems as it has been suggested. That's all from me for now. I appreciate I have rambled on a lot in this video, probably more than I expected,
but I had a lot to say about the big one and its so-called problems. So that's all for now. Please give it a like. It's a little thumbs up below. Please subscribe. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>